Zendesk Action Builder. Let's show you what it does, what it's useful for, and uh, some tips and tricks. This is the equivalent of the meme. Mom, can we have N810 or Zapier? And mom says, no, we have N810 and Zapier at home. <laughs> Zenesk is creating a flow of a chain of events that have to take place when a workflow is triggered. Much like you would do with NA10 or with Zapier. If you don't know what those are, no worries, I will leave a link in the description so you can have a look. I'll be making a few videos on those topics anyway, because it's so interesting, like at least the NA10 one. And let me share my screen. So if I'm here in my supports and then I go to admin center and then on here on the left hand side, I go to apps and integrations and I scroll down to actions. First one I have actions and then I have action flows. We're going to go directly to action flows because I don't want to create an external action yet. So this one has quite a bit of limitations. So you'll see what I mean in just a second. So let's just create a flow from start from the top right and I'll show you what it, what this means. We're going to call this one sales opportunity, sale ops, a workflow dedicated to sales opportunities, sales ops. All right, so next, right off the bat, first thing, very visual, I like it. So add a trigger. Now, add a trigger is just from Zendesk nowadays. You know, they keep saying that uh, this is just the EAP. It's still early access, so you can apply to it. There is a, going to be a link in the description how you can apply to it. And they say in the future, they will add external triggers as well. Right now, they only have Zendesk triggers, and that comes with a bunch of restrictions as well. It's not as powerful as triggers. So I have tickets in Zendesk users and agent copilot. And this one is very powerful. I will make another video on it. Right now, I'm just going to walk you through what you can do with it to uh, high level. So tickets, let's go to tickets. If a ticket satisfaction, for example, CSAT is requested or CSAT is received, very limited. I would like to see if I get a negative one and then I'd react, it doesn't matter. Seems to be soon to come. So ticket comments, lifecycle properties, properties. I would like to see, for example, if a ticket has a change in the contact reason, for example, if this is a sales opportunity, I would like it to trigger this workflow. But let's see, ticket priority changed, mm, ticket status changed, uh, ticket custom status changed. Okay, this could be useful because I could have a custom uh, status created, which if is uh, selected then that would trigger my event i would like that that was good ticket type change ticket form change ticket subject change ticket description change ticket brand change external link problem link change da 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 cc's the submitter change da 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 mm, let's go if uh form changed all right good so if the form changed then i want this to be triggered uh let's go to the plus and see what i can add here look i can branch into uh, yes no i'm not going to do that i'm just going to consider it like it's a straight uh, a to z i'm not going to if uh, b is whatever then trigger another one we're not going to do that in this example so let's see next steps look up a ticket update ticket create a ticket da -da 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 -da. and then i have external steps this is the interesting one so look, I have Google Sheets, which are already connected. I don't want to do that. What I want to do is I want to connect my Slack, meaning that if a ticket form has changed in my sales, for example, the agent sees that this is a sales opportunity and they change the form to sales opportunity. I want this to send a Slack message to the appropriate team, somebody who deals with sales in my organization. So I'm going to click Slack. I don't have Slack connected. So what do I do? I click connect. So now I have this pop-up window show up. And it asks me, do you want to allow this connectivity to happen? Yes, please. I allow it. Good. Now it has done it. It has connected to my Slack, which is great. So I want to post a message, please. Thank you. Channel. I'm going to look for the channel testing. Where are you? I have a bunch testing. Where are you? Can I? I cannot search it. Well, 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 well. I do not like that. I have to search for it. Um, boom, 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 boom. Where are you, bro? Testing, testing, testing testing here it is click testing all right message hi new sales op has dropped good that's the thing all right i can add a variable here and i can say what form has changed and uh, i can put priority no requester id no i can put the status submitter id tags type da -da -da, via 
Um, uh, let's put the tags, sure. And then uh, let's put um, a signee who is dealing with this because I want to, you know, collaborate with my team member to get this solved. Good. So I posted in Slack. What I want to do is I want to analyze the ticket via OpenAI because I am cool like that and I want my AI tool to actually help me. All right, so external step, I want this to be analyzed by an AI. Now I can also suggest an integration, which if you do, I will do in just a second. So let's click open AI. So this is not just your average connect your chat GPT because that it doesn't work like that. You have to connect your platform that open AI. So you have to have an account using the open AI API so you can connect to the different models that they use. So look, I'm gonna click connect and it asks me for an API key. Now what you do is you go to platform that open you open an account if you want to just test you know just put five ten bucks in there it's enough for testing purposes if you want to use it for real then well you know you have to contribute and you go here you go to uh, the cogwheel which is settings and then you go to API keys it's pretty simple and then you right here where it says create new secret key click it you give it a name let's call it action builder Zendesk all right, so select a project. It's this one for me, create secret key. Boom, now I copy it and I go back to my Zendesk. I paste this bad boy. Organization ID, no, I don't want, I don't need that. Allow connection and boom, I'm connected to OpenAI. What do I want it to do? I want it to analyze sentiment, extract keywords, summarize text, send prompt. I want it to summarize the text, please. Please summarize my text. Model, what model do I want? Uh, GPT-4, GPT-4.0, GPT-4.0 mini. This is sufficient for this type of request. This is a prompt. Now I tell it what to do, okay? Analyze request and summarize opportunity for sales team. All right, good. So now what I wanna do, I wanna add a variable. I'm not going to add any variables in this case because I don't need them. All right, so let's do this. All right, so now this is done, All right? This is looking pretty good. What I can do now is uh, if I want, I can suggest an integration. So I can go and connect to my other millions of platforms out there if I use one, right? I don't necessarily think everybody's going to use Google Sheets, Jira, Salesforce, Slack, and OpenAI, even though these are pretty popular. And I personally use all of these, not Jira, not Salesforce. But the other ones that you do, and you maybe do too, but you might have some of the million other platforms. And what you do is suggest an integration. And what you do is in here, you suggest the Zendesk because it's still an EAP, what you want it to connect, okay? So if you have a platform of choice, you can tell Zendesk, I need it. And look, they give you here an example, example HubSpot, where you can connect Trello, ServiceNow, Airtable, whatever it is that you use. I don't know what you use. So that's pretty cool. You know, it's still an EAP. So let's give them a, give them a chance. What I do now is I save this bad boy. Now it's done. I'm just going to create this really quick video on the theory. I do not have a use case for you right now because uh, I'm pressured with time. By the way, my name is Dominic. I'm a customer experience guy. I've been doing it for 15 plus years, 12 years as an expert. Well, I hope I'm an expert after 12 years. I don't know there's been 400 plus projects hitting me all the time. So I, I, I gathered some experience and trying to humbly share that information and trying to help you scale your business to make it more efficient because we have all these tools and it'd be a shame not to add them to our portfolio because they make our lives so much easier and the customer experience so much better. If you like this content, please like and subscribe. I'd be really grateful. If you need help with Zendesk, we are a customer experience agency. We're a Zendesk partner. We don't do anything else except Zendesk and AI. And that's it. This is what we do. Mostly customizing customer experience with AI through Zendesk. But that's another story. So if you need help, there is a link in the description that you can reach out. There's an email as well. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much. Bye.